What is love? Baby, don't strike my channel. Welcome to the first of an 80 part series involving life's most complicated and misunderstood and impossible to understand. No, 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 no. No, love isn't complicated. It's you that makes it complicated. You with your emotions and your insecurities and your inability to tell the truth all the time. Don't take that too personally. I'm talking to a mirror here. I had a very near and dear friend of mine some years ago who I met in 2014. Her name was Lauren. And Lauren was the older sister that I never had. We pretty much knew everything about each other. She knew what romantic interests I was pursuing. I knew all about her relationships that she was involved in. We hung out all the time. We, we were just the best of friends. And on April 15th of 2015, we unfortunately had a falling out um, a, over a disagreement that, well, it was because of that I learned something important. See, the feelings that I felt after our disagreement were very similar to that of a breakup or being rejected by a crush. And that was when I started to realize that love isn't complicated. Humans make it more complicated than it needs to be. Humans with their unnecessary labels and layers and added nonsense. Now, of course, people tried to tell me, oh, that's just because you secretly had romantic feelings for Lauren the whole time. You didn't even know. And yes, I did. Because the feelings were there. They were real. We just weren't expressing them like that. Because that's really the only difference. It's the how. We had a conversation about marriage. That if we hit a certain amount of years in life, that we would just say, screw it and get married. I was a little shocked, but then not bothered. Didn't change how I felt, didn't change how she felt. She went on about her life, I went on about mine. Love can best be described as an infinite energy colliding with scared and temporary monkeys. But you see, it's not that feeling that you get in your stomach. That is lust. That is your body's natural desire to procreate. That is your body saying, I have evaluated a suitable mate, typically visually, but even then, not always. Lust comes with expectations. Love does not. Love is choosing to care about people, especially on the days when you don't want to. And I've had a lot of people who did that for me. Not because they had an obligation, not because they felt the need to. I'm not the uh, greatest person in the world, believe it or not crazy, I know. But people care about me for some reason. And so I try to care about them back. And it's when they care about me when I'm at my worst, that's when I know that they actually care. Not that I should necessarily make them try. I was having a conversation with another good friend of mine. He told me that the person that I was infatuated with um, said that I was a nice person to be around, but I was nice, but also mean to him. That one floored me. Because as it turns out, I'm just as human as you. Surprise. I know, shocking. Even I'm still trying to come to terms with it. And that's, that's really what it comes down to. Is recognizing that what humans do is we create all these layers to protect ourselves because we live in a society that thinks it's okay to make fun of other people for being people. We think it's okay to make fun of people for having feelings for other people. 
and that is, of course has caused us to come up with silly labels like platonic and you know silly smoke screens like oh i could never ruin a good friendship you mean you're just keeping them around and if the person you're with doesn't work it's usually what it means and that's not to say that some people recognize that and don't want that i have had that with people as well but we've also recognized that you know caring about each other is caring about each other the only difference is is the how when it comes to the love i express for the people i care about the only difference between that and the love i have for my wife is some physical acts there's no there's no other difference because there just doesn't need to be Caring about people is simply caring about people. It's important in life to learn to take no for an answer. If you care about somebody and they say no, accept it. Move on. If it's someone who plays hard to get, you're just toying with yourself at that point. Because the truth of the matter is, while you should take the time to evaluate yourself and think of things that you could probably improve, there could be negative qualities that somebody saw that they just don't want and you might need to work on them. You also need to see rejection as opportunity. Imagine how much heartache would be saved if people could just simply say yes or no, and then if you could just simply, okay, let's figure out what I can do and then move on. You can't make people feel the same way about you as you do about them. It's impossible. So why waste the effort? I was raised in a Christian environment, and that instilled most of my romantic insecurities because of the fact that they preach the, the concept of finding the one. And um, because I was a good little Christian boy, the feelings that I had in my stomach, they were not lust. I have been commanded by God himself to never lust. So that's not me, it's love. It has to be, because that's what I was told. Yeah, it turns out that's a load of crap. I, I was lusting. I, I, I was thinking of myself with those people, with those past infatuations. And I had to come to terms with the fact that, that while I had to be better than everybody, I'm not. I'm just as bad as, as anybody else. While I'm capable of being Jesus, I'm also capable of being someone as horrible as Stalin and Mao. And so, that's why I don't like to make fun of people for being human so much anymore. It's funny if we're all laughing. It's not funny if it's causing social anxiety and it's causing people to harm other people because they can't be true with their feelings. It's not funny when people have to deal with stalkers. It's not funny when uh, someone can't take no for an answer and thinks it's playing hard to get only to find out they just committed a serious crime. And that's why when it comes to love, you have to be honest because love doesn't take joy in evil things. It delights in the truth. It's patient. Love is kind doesn't envy, doesn't boast, always hopes, always perseveres, love never fails. And love isn't pie. You aren't required to limit yourself to anybody if you don't want to. You can express yourself how you feel, but you also should recognize if those expressions are overwhelming. Or if you feel you're being overwhelmed, just say, hey, it's a bit much. Please, please cool it. It's not that hard. And you shouldn't take that too personally either. If you're just being yourself and it's coming off as too much, you know what? Maybe those people just aren't meant to be in your life. Or maybe they're just not quite ready for you yet. Or who knows? What matters is the truth. You can't fight the truth. You, can't, you can fight yourself and the truth all you want, but in the end you will lose. Because if you can't be honest with yourself, 
how are you supposed to be honest with other people? And if you can't be straightforward with what you want or what changes may have happened or come up, then how is that other person supposed to trust you? Love is such a delicate thing that we do, though, isn't it? With nothing to prove. What's the worst that's going to happen? Someone's going to make fun of you? Someone's going to post on, on their Twitter all the, all your, your, your feelings and emotions? So? If it's sad and pathetic, no one's going to care in a couple days. And anyone who goes out of their way to remind you and tries to follow you and make you feel insecure about it is they themselves insecure about the mess that is their own life that they refuse to accept. Because in the end, we aren't in competition with each other. We're in competition for each other. And as I said, rejection is opportunity. Depending on your personal preference, there are between about, oh, four to eight billion opportunities out there. Nothing in life gives you such grand and gracious odds. Now, yes, some of you will go, well, technically, you know, population density in different areas and blah, blah, blah. That's not the point. The point is, it took me about, oh, five, six attempts of finding the one before I found my now wife. Seven out of four billion and i'm a fucking loser yeah it sucks being told no in that initial moment you feel like you're inadequate you feel you just aren't worthy because society tells you that unless you have huge muscles or unless you're you know fit and thin or whatever you don't matter and that's a load of crap see my other video But you're not helping yourself by hiding behind things like platonic. You're not helping yourself by trying to convince yourself you don't feel a certain way. It's better for those feelings to be known. Because then people trust you. Because then people don't feel like you're hiding anything. Because then you have the honest dialogue and then you can decide, well, you know what, I'm sorry, I just don't feel that way. We should just be friends. Or you say... I feel more comfortable being friends first. I want this to be one of those fun relationships that's, you know, real and that we're not going to just put on masks and pretend that everything's great all the time because, you know, we just want that picture perfect bullshit Hollywood Disney crap toxic nonsense movie happy ending that's not real. You want good relationship advice? Watch Scrubs because Dr. Perry Cox is totally right. It's not about will they, won't they, and will it be ever after. It's, it's, it's always work. It's not going to be you find somebody and then they make you better. You should be trying to figure out who you can also help make better in return. You need to find somebody who complements your weaknesses. And you, your strengths, complement theirs. And not everything's going to fit perfectly. Yeah, you shouldn't set your standards too high. You also don't have to settle either. But you also need to learn to be yourself and you need to be truthful all the time. Otherwise, if the other person thinks something different of you, later on down the road, the real you is going to come out. Divorce rate's high because people aren't being truthful. And imagine how much heartache would be saved if you just were able to be honest with yourself and with those with those other person or even persons whatever the situation may be and then you can move on anyway if you like this please like and subscribe and share and you know Maybe I'll do more philosophy videos in the future. Live long and prosper.